treasure, great fortune, long lost, forgotten, and frozen in time. Whispers through history indicative of something once great. It's enough to make anyone feel like a child again, capturing our imaginations in the pursuit of adventure and great reward. But why is a bar of gold worth more to us than the air we breathe or the food we eat? Diamonds are a girl's best friend, but water is merely in the friend zone. The very things we need for our own survival aren't even regarded as highly. Treasure. People have killed for it, risked their lives for it, but what is it good for? Does it make us live longer? Does it invoke human progression? Does it carry the weight and meaning of anything far more important in the universe? Hell, can you even eat it? Humanity. It's fascinating when you take a step back and look at it from another perspective, always longing for what we don't have. Lifetimes wasted on meaningless endeavors towards the hollow illusion of happiness. Our lives are short. Why waste what little time we have on nonsensical goals? Live life the way it was intended. Don't waste it. So I'm going to play a game, Uncharted. We follow the adventure of Nathan Drake and his strangely older pilot friend, Victor Sullivan. Nate secures the funding for this expedition by scamming some chick who works for the Travel Channel or some shit. Look, Mr. Drake, you signed a contract. <laughs> she really puts the F.U. in funding. What? But it quickly becomes way more than anyone was bargaining for. This isn't just your average harmless taking advantage of a woman situation. Their boat gets attacked by pirates after Drake uncovers the journal of his ancestor, Francis Drake. But what's worse? Spending another second listening to you, lady. You obviously haven't been in a Panamanian jail. Pomeranian jail? That sounds adorable. Yeah, you got one phone call. No good hoodlum. Less talking, more shooting. Yeah, you do that, I'm going bare knuckle. Yeah. <laughs> then Nate's friend Sully rescues them as everything explodes and they fly off into the sunset. The end. <sighs> Man only interested in the climax. He must be a real hit with the ladies. Never had any complaints. Okay, then. I'll jump to the good part, just for you. Hey! Ho, ho, ho. He was onto something big, all right. What the fuck am I playing? I don't care for over budget. I mean. Oh my god, this chick sucks. Yeah, just, just leave her in fucking in Mexico or, or wherever the fuck they are. Good. Okay, anyway, we're actually playing for real now, and I gotta say, this game looks pretty damn good. I am playing on the remastered PS4 version here, but of what I've seen of the original, and no I haven't played it, the PS3 version isn't noticeably super awful looking or anything, especially considering the time it came out. From the dark interiors of the ancient ruins to the lush expansive jungly landscapes, aesthetically all the environments feel complete and as diverse as possible, at least as varied as you can make jungly trails without feeling too repetitive. Though they almost did too good of a job disguising the path with topographical details. I'm fucking lost half the time, which is good in a way, it makes it feel more open and free to explore, but the problem is there isn't really anything to do besides just keep plowing forwards. That's how I'm feeling right off the bat at least. I can't help but feel like I'm wasting time because it seems like I should be looking around a lot more, but there's no reason to. Sure there's these little treasures you can find and that's nifty, good for completionists, but it doesn't really add anything for me. Then Nate says, Let's take a look around. Like, oh, okay, now I'm supposed to explore around a little. I got you. We I. But no, Nate, by look around, did you mean walk forward a few more yards? The only reason he said this is because his GPS was like, Arriving at fucking destination. And then he was like, I don't want. And then he called the GPS a dirty lying whore. Like, have you ever been driving along with your GPS and it goes all, Arriving at fucking destination. But it's still like, you know, a block away. Yes. Nate's just a dumbass. And Sully's no better for humoring him like that. Maybe you're not reading that thing right. If you assholes were trying to find this shit on Apple Maps, you'd be at the goddamn North Pole. So consider yourself lucky it's just 20 feet over yonder way. But then the game seems like it keeps tossing back and forth what it's trying to favor. By the time I got to the ruins, I figured the game was just fucking with me, and looking around was pointless. But nope. I got to this so-called puzzle, and it ended up taking way longer than it should have. Nate states that he recognizes the symbols on the floor. Wait, I recognize these symbols. And I'm prompted to look at the journal for what with the hints and clues. The order of these signs has some importance. Well, I'll have to agree with that hypothesis. Somebody already went through the trouble of numbering them. Not much of a puzzle here. So, I assume I'm supposed to step on the symbols on the floor in the correct order to open up this big door in front of me. So, I try that and nothing happens. I try jumping on them. Nope. 
fucking shooting them? This little check the journal indicator icon thingy only seems to come up when I'm diddling around more towards the center of the room. So I would think my objective lies here. Then sure enough, after being completely lost for like five minutes, I noticed there's a higher landing I can climb to. Like, God damn it, Nate. This is the kind of thing you should tell me look around for, not arriving at fucking destination. It would have been of much more importance to tell me that the symbols I'm supposed to deal with were up here. What the hell, Sully? Nate, I'm not looking for a lousy piece of tin. I'm up to my eyeballs in debt. And I'm up to my nipples in tin. Fuck tin. Tin is shit. I was really counting on this one. And you bring me fucking tin. I hate tin. That and, well, just a few bad deals. I put all my money into tin stock. A weird thing to do for a guy who hates tin. Look who's talking. Mr. Fucking Tin. Fucking Tin. Reginald Fucking Tin, sir. Hey, watch your step down there. Oh. Nate and Sully discover where the Golden Man statue once was, and then follow some more clues that lead them to a, a nazi submarine all fetched up in a waterfall. Something about this feels kinda hinky. Kinky? God damn it, old man. Lay off the fucking Cialis already. It's not that arousing. Oh. Oh. Oh, baby. Aboard the sub, Nate discovers something pretty bad must have happened to the crew. Their bodies are all... And, uh, and the captain is notably ripped to shreds. And Nate discovers some more clues in the standard treasure hunter fashion. And then Sully mysteriously cuts out on the radio. Or what? Sully? You there? I guess that uh, kinky nazi submarine must have got the best of him. Nate somehow manages to trigger a torpedo by tapping it. So now is as good of a time as any to bail on this place. So Sully's in debt to this nerd Gabriel. So they take the map we just uncovered and try to screw us over and beat us to the treasure. Slowly. Jeez, not that slow. Yes, come on, Navarro. It's like you're the main bad guy or something. Well, at least they're not actually here to hurt us. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, Roman. Well, Sully's dead. The sub blows up after an oddly long amount of time, which we use as a convenient distraction to run away. The annoying chick catches up to us, we fight our way back out through the ruins, somehow find a plane, and that doesn't go super well. Oh crap! We're on fire! Nate manages to survive, and now we gotta go try to find Elena, who parachuted out at the last minute right before the crash, unfortunately. Hot damn, there sure are a lot of fucking dudes to fight. It's like they just keep coming. I know this is an action-y shooter game, but I'm really not even that far in yet, and I already got a trophy for getting 50 kills with just the handgun alone. My amazing skills aside, is it really a good thing that I've had to kill 50 men already? On that note, there is a wide assortment of weapons you can obtain throughout Uncharted. From the aforementioned 9mm handguns, a few revolvers, some full automatic jobs, rifles, shotguns, grenades. Catch! But of course, you can only carry two guns at a time. I hate that about modern games. Sure, it's more realistic only being able to carry so much stuff, but does anyone actually prefer this? I should be allowed to carry every weapon I can find. I don't know why games insist on being realistic like that these days. Even Mythbusters tested this on their video game special. Sure, it gets strenuous and isn't recommended to take everything you can find along with you, but it would be far from impossible to manage more than two guns. <laughs> well, Christmas has come early. And it's not like there's any strategy or reason to plan your loadout ahead of time. 
So what's the point of this limitation? I just stuck with the basic ass handguns for the most part. Decent range, good accuracy. If you land a headshot, they're down in one well-placed hit anyway. With all the options though, you'll have no problem killing wave after wave after wave after wave after wave of douchebags this game sends your way. By the middle of the game, I started dreading playing more because I knew it was just gonna be more of the same monotonous shit. And the more I thought about it, the more it started to bother me. How many fucking people are after this treasure? I'm supposed to believe that Nathan Drake, Sully, and What's-Her-Face are all going up against this literal army? It's fucking stupid. How much could this treasure possibly be worth to where whatever portion is even worth your time or putting your life on the line? Implying that everyone got an even cut, which they wouldn't, plus everyone's paycheck, keeping the operation running, food, vehicles, etc. The treasure they're after is El Dorado. El Dorado. A solid gold statue of a golden man made out of gold. The most popular statue of a man that I can think of is none other than Michelangelo's Statue of David. The best reference I could find weighs the masterpiece in at 5.5 metric tons, a right around 12,125 pounds. And sure, their version of El Dorado here looks a lot heftier than David over there, but these fellas don't seem to have too much trouble shimming it around. Given the current price of gold, about $1,200 per ounce, multiply that by 16, that's $19,200 for every pound of gold. So 19,200 times our pal David's 12,125 pounds. So we conclude that if the statue of David was made out of solid gold, it would be worth a whopping $232,800,000. But now, all these motherfuckers gotta split that, and I have absolutely no way to accurately figure out how many guys are in on this. But based off of how many they sent my way to their deaths through the course of this game, I don't see it being impossible for there to be at least 1,000 strong behind this operation. There's probably way more, but let's just roll with 1,000 as a super approximate guess. That's only $232,800 per share, not adjusted for the head honchos taking bigger cuts or all other expenses to make this all happen not even a quarter of a million dollars at best is that really worth it from a game that only allows me to carry two weapons at a time because it's realistic is ridiculous i guess i can't complain if it wasn't for the endless improbable battles i don't know what the hell else i'd be doing at least there isn't a completely awful jet ski segment i really don't know what to say Control's bad, it is bad, and you should feel bad. I sure do. Is it like Naughty Dog has some super specific inability to make a jet ski segment that doesn't completely blow? Now, we meet some random asshole named Eddie. Nate gets thrown in the brig and we hear this guy yelling at some henchmen in the hallway. First, we hear him say to- Get out of my way, bulldog! Then- Open this goddamn door! That's then followed by just him kicking the door open with nobody immediately near him. Like, I really want to know what the hell was going on in this hallway. Was someone, like, ahead of him about to open the door? Who he told to get out of his way? Then he ordered them back to open the door as he was already about to kick it. It seems way more likely Eddie was just talking to himself. Because this guy doesn't show up until, like, a minute later. Also, this door doesn't have a handle or lock. So, Eddie's anxiety about getting it open and his decision to kick it are less than transparent. Eddie's stupid. I don't like Eddie. Elena busts Nate out and we're led on to manning the turret on the back of a moving jeep. This part's awesome. Lots of scenery to look at, pretty explosions, and unlimited rounds on the 50 cal and grenade launcher. Plus, I'm just super glad to be rid of Eddie. Ah, shit, he's back. At least I don't have to do another jet ski. Son of a bitch. Which way were they headed? Uh, northish. Northish. Apparently Sully's alive. Somehow the journal stopped the bullet, which is less luck and more just stupid. We solve some more puzzles, explore the catacombs, continue the mass murder spree. At this point in the game, the relentless firefight seemed way more justified. We're nearing the final stretch, coming up on the finale, so the onslaught of tougher bad guys is to be expected. But up to this point, it isn't like they've been holding back. So it doesn't feel quite as rewarding as it could if it did a better job building up to this if the previous battles were shorter and more scarce. We bump into that ass face Eddie and have a run-in with some mysterious zombies known as the Descendants. Don't mess with Eddie Rata! Oh no! Eddie! Oh wait, are we supposed to care about this? Now, we're at my favorite part of the game. 
I gave up expecting any real adventure stuff a long time ago. Uncharted is way more about the action, and this is where it uses it to its full potential. You're going through these dark, decrepit Nazi tunnels. Just you against the monsters. Honestly, this part kicked my ass. I died a ton, but this section hits on so many great points, it urged me to keep playing. It's dark and spooky and genuinely pretty scary. The level of challenge is perfect for this point in the game. It's something a bit different, doesn't overstay its welcome, and it's where the big twist comes in. Like, what the fuck, there's zombies? No. I know, most people have a thing against supernatural twists, and I generally do too. But it's nowhere near the level of any of the Indiana Jones movies, and everyone likes those. Well, except Crystal Skull. Plus, I didn't notice any clear-cut mention that this was anything supernatural, other than what we learn while looking at the exposition projector. Francis Drake going on about some god and unholy gibberish. It's just an ancient zombie disease. Also, this projector works, and it's just running by itself somehow, but I have to go through all this bullshit to get the power on to use the elevator? Guess the Nazis didn't pay their electric bill. This one's all you, cowboy. You know I can't make that jump. Don't worry, baby, I got this. Oops. No! So, it turns out the zombies come about whenever somebody opens up El Dorado and gets a good whiff of the old corpse inside. Yes, yeah, probably not Febreze Fresh. Yeah, Navarro is actually the mastermind, apparently. Do you have any idea what this is worth? To the right buyer? What, this? Roman's creepy alien corpse? Or, or you mean the disease? I don't see how either is really that marketable. If you plan on using it as a weapon, I'd like to know how you're supposed to convince your enemies to open up the sarcophagus and just take a huge ol' huff. He doesn't even explain this any further, but okay, he wants it for the zombie disease. I guess that puts a big hole in my flawed value to effort ratio in recovering El Dorado argument, but it's still stupid. Nate hops on the statue as it's airlifted out. And now it's time for the shittiest final boss ever. First of all, Navarro was in like four cutscenes. I really just thought he was one of the random henchmen and didn't have any significance. So I don't really give a shit about fighting him. And there just isn't much to this fight. You hide behind cover, poke your head out when you get a chance, and land a few shots on him. And it's infuriating because this cocksmoker uses like a fucking sniper rifle from two feet away. I know, it's not the fucking sniper rifle. It's technically the SAS-12 shotgun, but nah, this is not a shotgun. Dead accurate one hit kills from 20 feet away with a shotgun. My ass! It's a fucking sniper rifle, you lied. On top of dealing with his smelly ass, he sends in a bunch of his SWAT buddies. It's the same firefight nonsense we've been doing this whole game. You just land a few hits, he falls back, Repeat that a couple of times, then you have to do some quick time bullshit, which took me long enough to realize you're just supposed to rush him. And even after all that, he's still not dead. So, there's only one obvious thing left to do. Pushing a helicopter! Pushing it off and you're going down! Well, that's Uncharted. It's okay. It was Naughty Dog's first attempt at doing something completely different than their usual thing at the time, so it being less than perfect is understandable. Maybe sometime soon we'll check out Uncharted 2. But that's all we have time for today. I'm Pat Strex back. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. It's been some time. Shit happens. But I hope you enjoyed this video of Uncharted. I had a lot of fun making it. I know I've been gone a long ass time and my big ass bucket of excuses is starting to run dry. But I do have big plans to keep this channel going, keep things frequent. And to those who are still here, still bearing with me and didn't unsubscribe because I think I died, I wanna thank you guys a lot. There's definitely more to come soon, I promise. It's just with my current situation, it's kinda difficult to get these videos going. As for right now, just make sure you're subscribed, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, check out the band camp. I will be back to you with an important update real soon. Again, thanks for bearing with me, and thank you so much for watching.